Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. As the title says, I'll be rehousing the new additions in this video. And this enclosure is for the praying mantis that I got. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, it's the first time that I made an enclosure using uh, twigs and uh, a glue gun and that kind of stuff. So um, I got some dead leaves in the bottom. And of course that's going to mold. But I really wanted to create a forest type of floor like um in the enclosure i'm sorry i didn't know what words to use <laughs> but uh to but of course that's going to cause mold um so what i did is i got myself also a lot of springtails and i dropped a bunch of them in there maybe a bit too much but um i don't think that's going to be a problem for the mantis itself uh, so yeah, it's got some vertical hanging space. It's got enough space to hang down and mold um, As you can see I did spray some water there so it can take a drink now here is the beauty so Let me try to get it out Well, not try I'm going to get it out, but and here she is Hmm, the camera is not really doing a good job on the color. Maybe if I use my hand as a background, it will pick it up. Well, anyways, um, this is her. Pretty cool, if you ask me. Um, I can't find a whole lot of information on them. Come on, sweetheart. There she is. Sorry, a bit out of focus. So, <coughs> I'm really hoping that she's going to like this enclosure. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, like I said, really hope she's going to like this enclosure. Um, not really sure what she's doing right now, but I'm sure she'll uh, start finding her way. Um, let's get on to the next new addition. And this is the enclosure I got for the first ranch that we're going to house uh, of the new additions. And I made this enclosure for the Gramastola Ayaringi, one of the two. Uh, the other one is going to have exactly the same kind of setup. Um, I'm only going to do one of the species I got two of, uh, of every species, of course, because else um, the video is going to get way too long. Come on, move over. Move your butt. Move your butt. He really doesn't want to go. A little bit more forceful. There we go. So that's the Ayaringi. So this is what I prepared for that summer post poker. Um, it's got a decent amount of substrate, so it can burrow if it wants. And I did some fake leaf and some moss in there so it can um, web up and make a dirt curtain. And also so I can moisten the moss so it can have a drink. Let's see. It is, oh, focus, right there you can see some of the legs. So let's try to uh, coax it out. Oh. Uh, 
All right, I got it in a catch cut now. Let's try to get it in now. There is no dirt for it to hide. And it does exactly the same. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna think of something else. <laughs> okay, so I got it in this little vial. Um, using a method I saw, I believe, in one of Dark Dance videos with a carton and cut a hole in it. Now, I didn't cut a perfect hole because I was kind of in a hurry because I want to get these housings get over with. So what I'm going to do now is... Okay. <laughs> um, one moment. Need to create a little bit extra space for myself. All right, so it's in here. All right, it's trying to find some footing. I can't really see where it is. Ah, it's at the bottom. There he is. So it worked out. Uh, well, lesson learned for me to not try this again like this with arboreals. Uh, learned from my mistakes. All right, on to the next. Okay, now the Brachypelma auratum. Oh, and of course, the other summer post poker went in like a charm. It's like unbelievable. Uh, without the mat, it, it just walked in really, really calm. Um, so I really filmed the white one for you guys that think that all my houses go smooth. It doesn't. Like this, our Radom doesn't want to go. And it's in. There it is. I hope it doesn't run out again. A really tiny sling. Uh, so it's going to be a while before his beautiful colors are going to kick in, I guess. But uh, on to the next. Okay, next up, the two emperors. <coughs> the Emperor Scorpius, Pandinus Imperator. Now, as you can see, I got some of those uh, uh, springtails in here as well. Uh... Let's get on with the first one. <laughs> it's uh, already right on top and ready to go. What I think I'll do is just... Oh, it's feisty. There he is. They're already quite a lot bigger than the other scorpions I got. Of course, these get bigger as adults, but these are also only second instar. They're already quite as big as the other ones are. Oh, well, a lot bigger actually than the other ones are. Awesome. Look at that. All right, on to number two. And this is the enclosure for number two, or the second one really. Uh, yeah, as you can see, same kind of setup, and the little one is right there. Let me see. There it is. So yeah, they're both looking quite fat, which is a good thing because that means they're getting close to a mold, I guess. Um, the guy I got them from told me that he picked out the two most fat ones that he could find. <coughs> So they would moon, so they would mold reasonably s soon. There he is. Awesome. Oh, that went quite good. <laughs> All right. 
On to the next. This enclosure is kind of similar to the ones I gave to the uh, Gromosola Iringis, but this one is for the Gromosola Acteon. And they do actually kind of look alike as, as slings, as you can see. Um, so let's see if it wants to go in. Yeah, it was a lot easier this one than it was <laughs> with the Iringi. Here it is. Awesome. All right, on to the next. Okay, so this is the enclosure I got ready for Trinoculus cordatus, and the other one's gonna get exactly the same setup, of course. Uh, Hopefully this one will go a little, little bit smoother than the polkers. Well, the first polker. Okay. I'm not gonna touch its bum or whatever. Just gonna wait till it makes its way down. I'm gonna put the lid on. Oh, it's down. It's there, there on the plants. I will zoom in a little bit. And this enclosure is very similar to the ones of the other Gromosolas, but this one is for the Gromosola poteri. Um, the only difference is the water ball and the piece of uh, cork used as a hide. It's a different piece of, different kind of cork or bark, whatever. Uh, <coughs> now, here it is. It's the tiniest of the Gromostolas that I got, but um, I figure if I put it in the same kind of enclosure, it will be in here for like at least a year or so. So it's got time to grow in here. Um, in this tub it is in, it's on the sides a whole lot, and I think that's because the substrate is maybe a bit too moist, so I really made sure I gave it a very dry substrate. And now uh, let's see if it wants to go in. Yeah, you're right. Good one. Thank you. And there it is. A little Gromostoa pottery in a huge enclosure for it. But uh, like I said, we'll be in here for a year or so. Uh, maybe even longer. All right, on to the next. This enclosure I made ready for the Idiotoli mirror. I do have a pre-made burrow right over there. Maybe it doesn't show up on camera, but... Um, and I made this moss a little bit moist, well, wet actually, but uh, just to give it a way to get a drink. Because as I said, <coughs> as I said, this one had molted pretty recently. Here you can see it. I've got a catch cup ready. So let's see if it wants to go in peacefully. Come on, little one. Yeah, take a drink. And he's Im <coughs> immediately taking a drink. I'm sorry, I got something itching my throat. But there, there it is, a freshly molded idiot, freshly molded idiotly mirror sling. I'm hoping it's gonna go in that pre-made burrow and it's gonna make a, a trap door like the, they are supposed to, or at least like adults do. I'm not sure if slings do as well, but uh, we'll find out. All right. On to the next. Okay. The last tarantula that I will do for this housing. Uh, the Ceratogenus meridionalis. Here it is. Looks quite a lot like the Trinoculus cordatus, but um, obviously as adults they will differ. Let's see if this one wants to cooperate a bit. Oh, it fell in. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, same thing as with the 
Trinicinus quadratus, the enclosure is really big, but it's given room to dig, to web, to do whatever it wants. Um, I gave these a, a little bit more substrate than the uh, Trinicinus quadratus because the Ceratochorus are more burrowing than my uh, Trinicinus that I have in my collection. So, uh, but we'll see what it does. All right, next one. Okay, last one for this video. This is the setup I got for the Scolopendra hynanum. Now it's got enough substrate to dig in and I try to create some kind of forest floor type of deal. Um, because um, the guy that gave me this says he sees his um, adults quite often. Um, but he has a, quite a, a jungly type of floor created like with moss and plants and fake leaves, dead leaves, moss and all that. So I try to kind of do that in this small uh, enclosure. Now this one's got quite a height to it, so um, it shouldn't be able to escape from this one. But if you ever get one, um, they are escape artists. Now, the only problem I'm going to have is to get the little one from this top into the big top. Um, because they can't climb, so I can't let it do like the run in. So what I'm thinking about doing is either get them in one of these small pots, put the pot in there and let it come out, or either put this whole thing in here, but there's not a lot of room then. So um, one moment, let's see if we can get it to go in. Got the lid ready. No. Focus there. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome, it's in. <laughs> now, like I said, they can't climb, but they can stand on their last legs and, um, as you can see, like try to get out. Because if they've only got like two, three legs on the edge of something, they can pull themselves out. So always keep in mind when you make an enclosure for a centipede, that um oh here it is that if you make an enclosure for a centipede that it is high enough that it can't just climb out when you feed it or whatever um okay so now let's get it into its new enclosure so here we are um Put it in there. As you can see, it's trying to push itself out. And it's in. Now, <laughs> as you can see, these guys are really flipping fast. But anyways, um, I'm very happy this went well. Um, as you can see, this enclosure is high enough for it, so it can't just cl climb out. Um, also, when you have an enclosure that is high enough, uh, watch out how you put the air holes. As you can see, I only got a few on the sides, but uh, they can, like if I put one right here, a couple of uh, next to each other, um, if they can get the legs in, they can pull themselves up. And then when they get the uh, legs on top of this, like only the first two pair or whatever, they can pull themselves uh, themselves over the edge and they're out. And that'll be that. So um, keep that in mind if you get a centipede. Um, well, like I said, this was the last one. So thank you so much for watching. And... Uh, 
stay tuned for the next video. Bye bye.